This week, YouTube land, I want to look at three major UK brands and how and why they have had to rethink their products or the information around their products. But rather than sit here and talk from behind my computer screens, I thought what we would do is head out and look at one brand in a couple of different locations and give you my thoughts on why the way that we access information and we demand to be immersed in information has forced these brands to successfully change the way that they are producing their products for the market. So the first brand I'm going to talk to you about is here, I brought you out with me today. I've just been and done some, a day of wildlife photography and I thought I would bring you along because this one is actually something that I use most weekends. And this is a map. Now this is a physical printed map from the Ordnance Survey. And this is another brand that's had to reinvent itself. Now, traditionally, this is where their strength was printed maps for hikers or for surveyors or for military purposes. This is where the guys at the Ordnance Survey were really strong. Now, this is a hiking map, so it's got all of the bridleways, the footpaths, the contour lines of hills, all those things that are important to me when I'm coming to places like this on a weekend to go and pitch myself up for the day to in a woodland like this where I need to uh, know exactly the lay of the land where I'm going to. So why has the Ordnance Survey had to reinvent itself? Well, obviously the advent of the internet and things like Google Maps and Microsoft Maps and all of the online mapping capability that's out there now, the, the need and the demand for printed based maps like this is obviously on the decline. So the guys have had to come up with innovative ways of reinventing themselves to cater for people like me that still want to have this printed capability, but also cater for those that want to have the capability to use it on their mobile phones. And this is where the guys at the Ordnance Survey have been pretty clever. All of their printed maps, this cost me about $10, $15, not very expensive. Now, of course, as soon as I buy this and, and it's sent to me, it's pretty much out of date. It's out of date because as soon as you put something on paper, the chances are it's going to change straight away and it's already out of date. But in any way, this came to me and it came on the inside cover with a unique code. So almost like a lottery scratch panel, you scratch it off and on the cover of this, it drives me to uh, the App Store, whether it's an Apple App Store or whether it's the Google Play Store. Now, so you download the Ordnance Survey app and you put in your unique code and it automatically allows you to download the electronic version of this. The electronic version is then on here on my mobile device. But what they've done is they've made it far more engaging. What they've done is they've in embraced the social aspects now of technology. So on here, I can plot maps, I can share it with people, I can add comments, I can save it as a favorite, I can come back and do it again. This is where these guys have reinvented themselves. So they've kept their one foot firmly in the traditional printed side for people like me who like to have it on the front of my bike and cycle and watch where I'm going, or those that prefer to have it on their mobile devices, again, so they can plot their routes and share their routes in a social way. So the Ordnance Survey have been really clever. Traditional paper-based publishers have reinvented themselves in a great way. This brand I'm going to talk about is a brand that was essentially the YouTube of the day. Now, when I talk about this brand, it will make sense. Now, not everybody will have heard of this brand because I think it's predominantly a British brand. But when I owned my very first car in the mid 80s, to do any work on it or do any maintenance or change the brakes or do anything with it 
I had to own a Haynes manual. Now, the Haynes manual here, actually, I bought this off eBay for, I think it was $6, uh, because it's actually the year and model of the car that I actually owned. But Haynes, obviously, with the birth of YouTube and interactive online training, the need for this printed material now to tell me how to change the brakes on my car or do anything that uh, is reasonably engineering focused on my vehicle, this is now out of date. It's no longer how people want to access this kind of technical information. There is better, more economical and more interactive ways of accessing technical information. So what does Haynes had to do? Well, I was lucky enough to go to the Haynes Museum uh, a few months ago, and I think we posted some pictures of going along to that. And what Haynes have done is they've realized that the days of producing this kind of manual for people like me is pretty much over. There's no need for them to tell me how to change the brakes on my car here today when they know and they accept that I'm just going to go to YouTube and have a look at a video that tells me how to do that. So what Haynes have done is they've taken their concept here and applied it pretty much to products or platforms that we're just not going to own. So whether that's something like the Bismarck or a Spitfire or something along those lines, that means that they've taken the model of the Haynes manual and slightly changed the emphasis of the information and turned it into an owner's manual for a spaceship or a satellite system or a tank. So therefore enthusiasts can now buy their product and still access information about products that they're probably never ever going to own. So Haynes has had to reinvent itself and apply itself to the same similar kind of information but for products that you and I are just never going to own. Now if you followed any of our uh, magazine articles you'll know that a gentleman called Roy Scorer does a little, little bit of articles on illustration. He actually produces illustrations now for the Haynes Manual brand and he did tell me some of the Haynes Manuals that his illustrations have appeared in and I think it's the Bismarck he did some on and he told me I hope might maybe we can do another tutorial on that but that is where Haynes have had to completely reinvent itself. Finally on our brands that have had to reinvent themselves I wanted to look at something a little bit more fun but I brought you to a priory here or the ruins of a priory here in Chichester and the message is quite apt especially if you know this brand and this brand is something that I grew up with in the 70s and 80s reading the books from this brand and from this particular author and this brand has had to reinvent itself. Now all those years ago it inspired me to do all of my outdoor activities, so whether that's cycling, kayaking, camping, all of those kind of things, that's what they were about. That's what Enid Blyton was about. Adventure stories, the great outdoors. Now of course these days a lot of youngsters, the target audience of those books and the adventure stories, no longer buy these kind of books. So kids of the age that I was back then, 12, 13, reading these books, they are now reading on Kindles, they're listening to audiobooks, they're watching YouTube, they're accessing these kind of stories, if they're accessing them at all, in different ways. So therefore, Enid Blyton has had to reinvent itself. Staying with the traditional publishing and the Ladybird book kind of size that it produced way back then, it's kind of hoping that if it takes its model of information writing in terms of adventure storytelling around the old famous five books and applies them to the problems of today, 
people like me and my generation who were big fans back then will buy their books. Now, I only bought this because I thought that was a great story to tell, but this is a book about Brexit. Now, I'm staying away from political argument. The hot topic here in the UK at the moment is Brexit. And what they've done is they've taken with this the storytelling methodology that they put into all of those adventure stories back then and applied it to a modern day problem and even on the cover here it says 350 million pound picnic fund now if you understand famous five and you understand the brexit discussions you understand how funny that is and you know what that means but what they've done is they've then reinvented themselves by saying look we're great at telling stories but let's apply what we do in telling stories and apply it to real modern day problems and they've done that with lots of different subjects so go on to Amazon and type in Enid Blyton and you'll see all of the new type of books that they're producing so that was my whistle stop tour of three major brands that I've noticed have had to change the way that they produce and deploy information around their products that's just purely because of the way that we access information today and the advent of YouTube and the popularity of social media has changed the way completely that information is created, deployed and accessed from a user's perspective. I'd be interested to hear how you, if you and your organisation are having to rethink how you're producing information and what you're having to embrace or if you're having to reinvent it will be quite interesting to hear but i hope you found that slightly longer video for youtube a little bit interesting a little bit of fun i know i did get lots of comments saying you know looking forward to seeing this one there you go we've looked at the ordnance survey we've looked at haynes manuals and we've looked at the good old enid blyton books